Hello, it's Debbie. Well, I just got done teaching how to do a um, pot pie. And now I said the next thing I'm going to do is teach uh, how I do a banana bread. Everything I do is quick and easy because I prefer fast, easy, quick, right? That's just how I am if you know me. So we're going to have um, three bananas that we're going to start with. I'm just going to show you what I'm using so you can be prepared. I did put it in the description of this video, but I have parchment paper. You can grease your pan if you don't want to use parchment paper, if you don't have it. When you put the parchment paper in your loaf pan, you have it overlap a little bit on the edges. Okay, so that's ready to go. <coughs> flour, I'm just using regular flour, but you can use any kind of flour, okay? I know some of you use certain kinds, coconut flour, you might use whole wheat flour, it's all okay. Consistency is just a little different. This is what I had, so that's what I'm using, regular flour. Baking soda, a little bit of that. Sugar, now I happen to have Coconut sugar, so I'm going to use that today, but I don't always use that. A lot of times I use regular sugar, but I've got the coconut. We're going to try it out today. You can use any sort of nuts if you'd like to put them in there, walnut, pecan, or chocolate chips. I happen to have a little bit of chocolate chips in here, so I'm going to sprinkle that in. <clears throat> One egg. Now, I'm only making a single loaf. Um, normally you'd want to make maybe two or three loaves so you would be double or tripling this recipe. Half a cup of mayonnaise, you're going to go, ooh, what's that about? But you're going to find out that it's going to give it a really wonderful moist flavor. So half a cup of mayonnaise. You can also use salad dressing if that's what you have. And I believe that's it. So bananas. To keep get ripe bananas, you get yourself bananas. Sometimes you can buy them at the store where they're already, you know, days old and they're on a special rack. But to keep bananas getting ripe, you put them into a paper bag. And just fold it up and that's where they'll ripen in there quickly. You can also put them in the oven if you'd like and they'll ripen up, they'll get soft. The reason you want them really ripe is because the riper they are, the sweeter they are. You might think you want to throw that away because it's black and brown and all that, but you don't want to throw it away. That's when it's the best to use. Okay, so I have three of those. I just got to shut my stove off, my oven. It's telling me it's ready. Okay, sorry, I had to shut my little timer off. Okay, so three bananas. One, two, three. And you notice they're pretty ripe. Now, the other day when I was using bananas to bake, I said that it's easier to open it from what we call the bottom of the banana as opposed to the top. It just opens a lot faster. Did you see how fast that went? <clears throat> Here it is, all bushy. And I'm going to stick that into a medium bowl. There you go. There's one. Don't forget to put this in the compost, which I will do after. <clears throat> Here's my second one. You don't want to put more bananas than what you need, okay? Just go with what the recipe, what I'm telling you. And here goes the third one. So I have three of them in there right now. Now you don't need to mash them with a mixer or anything like that. You want them to be very chunky. I'm gonna use a fork. So what I'm doing is I'm just mashing them. I'm kind of like mashing them up and pushing on them. Now there's another thing you can do, which makes it fast and easy, is you can also use a potato masher. Now let me show you what I mean by that. I 
if you have one, I like this one, you see how it is, it's almost like a ricer. And you just push down, mash it up, get it all mashed. Not pushy so that it's all one solid mass. You want hunks. Do you see how I've got hunks of banana in there? You don't want it all liquefied or anything. Okay, so I mashed that up. That just made it go much faster. And now I'm just gonna mash it some more here. Like that. Mashing those up. And the next thing I'm going to add now is my half cup of mayonnaise. So I'm gonna stick that in. Half cup mayonnaise. If you have a spatula, you can use it to get every last drop out. I'm just using my fork right now. Maybe I can get a spoon and get the rest of it out. I don't like to waste anything. There you go, see how much was in there? So we get all that mayonnaise out. And one egg. And you just put the egg, the mayonnaise, on top of the banana mixture. Again, remember to compost. All right, there it all is. Now I'm gonna mix it up. Here we go. Mixing that up. Interesting, huh? I'm so glad I'm doing this now because I love to do this. I love to bake and I love to teach. So I'm combining it all. And you know what? At my age now, I'm not like working anymore in my profession as a social work. And I love to teach and it keeps my mind occupied and it keeps me doing things so that I don't get bored or depressed or anything like that in this crazy world. So when I do stuff like this, it makes me feel good. So we got all this mixed up. Do you see how that's all nice and mixed? I'm gonna set that aside for a few seconds. I'll put this back on the counter and I'm gonna bring over my other bowl. And in that bowl is where we are going to put the flour, the baking soda, the sugar, and then if you're gonna have nuts or, oh, a little bit of salt. And if you're gonna have nuts or chocolate chips or anything, that's where you put it. So we want one and one half cups of flour, okay? So here we go. Sometimes this just goes piling out. There's one. If you notice, I'm not like one that's like so careful how I measure. And as I mentioned before, you know, my grandmother, I don't think she ever measured much. She just went a pinch of this and a bunch of that and, and everything was always yummy. So here's one and a half cups. I owe a lot of this liking to bake and cook for my Bubby Davis, which is on my mother's side of the family. And um, she was amazing. And there was always food there for us whenever we came over, even though she didn't have much. She always had something there for us. Okay, so there is the flour. Now we're gonna put in a teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon. I got one of these newfangled <laughs> spoons. So I'm just gonna stick it in there. Oh wait, it won't go in. So we're just gonna put one teaspoon of baking soda. There we go. And we are going to put in three quarters of a cup of sugar. So now, like I said, I have this coconut sugar. Not necessary to use. Regular sugar is just fine. I honestly, this is the first time I'm using this. So as you can see, I'm opening it and I have no idea how this is going to turn out with this kind of sugar. Wow, there's all these little lids on it. What the heck? 
Open it. And let's see how it turns out with coconut sugar. So we need three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup. It's almost like, well, it is brown and it is sugar, but it's like the consistency of a brown sugar. Just have to crush it up a little bit. Like I said, I've not used this before. So let me just get it ready to use. You can just use regular sugar or sugar substitute. Okay. So here we go. A little bit more. Now, I think what I decided to do is I'm going to put some regular sugar in there too. So I don't have three quarters of a cup. There's probably a half a cup there. So I'm going to add about a, another quarter of regular refined sugar, okay? So now I'm going to put that all inside there. And now we mix. We mix it up till it's all blended well. I'm mixing all the flour, the baking soda, and um, the sugar. And we're supposed to put a little touch of salt, so let's do that. Not much, guys, okay? There we go, just a little touch of salt. Don't ask me why we do that, but we're doing it. So I'm mixing it all up. Here we go. Now, if you have a sifter, which I do, you could use a sifter, but it's not necessary because we don't, the, the flowers that we use nowadays are pretty much sifted already. Okay, so all that's mixed together. So now we have the banana mixture with the mayonnaise and the egg, and we have the flour and all the dry agreement ingredients in another spot. What we're going to do now is we're gonna combine it all. When we're combining it, we don't want to over mix, please. Because if you over mix it, it won't have the consistency you want. You want it to still be a little chunky, so I'm just gonna to start to pour this in here and mix and pour. It's almost like painting and mix and pour. There we go, so we got it all in. Now I'm gonna mix it up. Like I said, we don't want it mixed too much. Obviously we wanna blend in all the flour so that's what I'm doing. I'm blending in all the flour, making sure it's all mixed into it, but not like a cake mix where you have everything like so perfect. No, this is just get your batter mixed up so you, the bananas are covering everything. See, bananas are covering everything, and I'm going to show you a close-up of this in just a second. Okay, so I don't want it mixed any more than that. And I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna bring this right up to the camera so you can get a good look. Okay, see how it's mixed? But it's not like really, 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 really blended. You can still see bits of, of banana there. Now that's it. Seriously, that's it. What I want to do is, as I said, you can put peanuts, walnuts, pecans, chocolate chips. I have a little bit of chocolate chips left over from those uh, banana chocolate chip 
oatmeal cookies I made. So now I'm just gonna pour them in there all at once. That's it. And I'm gonna stir those around a bit so they get evenly distributed. And there we go. That is my batter. Now, remember I said, got my pan ready to go. I've got the parchment paper on it. The oven has been preheated to 350. So now I will grab a spatula. And we will now put our batter into our loaf pan. And then I'm going to put it in the oven and bake it. And when I put this online, because right now it's not online, when I put it online, I will have pictures of what it looked like when I took it out, okay? So here we go. Oh, this pan, this bowl is heavy. Wow. It's one thing about these breads is when you make a banana bread or a zucchini bread or anything like that, the batter is quite heavy. When you take it out, you let it cool. Let it cool down. And then you can take it out of the um, pan. Let it cool for about 10 minutes. Take it out place it on a rack or whatever you've got to have it cool off. And banana bread usually tastes good a second day. So you can wrap it in um, like a plastic wrap or put it in a big Ziploc baggie and you just let it sit. And this is it. That's it. We are done with mixing everything. Again, this is very fast. There's tons of recipes to do for banana bread. But because I like to do things quick, if I wasn't talking, this would have been 10 minutes done over bake. <laughs> okay, so now you just move it around to get it nice and smooth in your pan. There it is. It's ready to go in the oven. You bake it for about 60 to 70 minutes. In about 45 to 50 minutes, I want you to go and open up your oven door, check it, see how it's doing. If you have a toothpick, you can stick your toothpick in it. If it comes up dry, it's ready to go. Otherwise, give it another five minutes or so. Don't go over. 70 minutes because then you're going to start to burn it so let's see how you do and you know make comments for me so i know that you're trying these things out and that it's turning out good or not good so that i know what to do the next time through don't give up keep trying and remember god loves you i love you have a great day and again, I'm coming over to turn off the video. Bye.